The Shattered Throne is a new activity released with the third iteration of the Dreaming City. This dungeon, as it's been called, is essentially a three-man endgame level activity in between the difficulty of a strike and a raid with bosses with mechanics within it. In today's guide, I'll be showing you the encounters along with the locations of chests and lore collectibles. If you're looking for information on that other thing, check the video that I uploaded before this one. Also, you should check the description for any specific timestamps. The first thing to know is that the Shattered Throne is not like a story mission, it is something that will take you a little while to do. It is a 570 to 590 level activity. It is an end game activity for three people, and it rewards powerful drops. Respawn timers are 45 seconds long, as opposed to the regular 30 seconds of lesser activities. In order to actually get to the Shattered Throne, you need to find the Confluence, which is available via portal in various sections of the Dreaming City. The easiest portal is the one located in the Spine of Carries, because it's the closest one. Head to the spine and then follow the on-screen directions in order to find it. The first encounter drops you in a maze in search of temples and shrines to kill labyrinth majors. The first major will be directly in front of you when you first walk into the area. When you kill all of the adds in this particular area, an icon will pop up with a picture of either a dragon, snake, bird, or fish in some sort of a stance. You need to find the corresponding icon that pops up and defeat the enemies at that new location going around until you've defeated all of them at all locations. On the screen now is a general guide of all the locations of the temples and shrines. The order of the icons that you get appears to be random every time. There is no big secret or strategy to this part of the dungeon at all. It is literally just hopping around from temple to temple, killing the major target until you get to the final one. Once you kill the final target, a floor will open up and you'll progress to the next section, on top of getting a powerful reward. This next section is a platforming section. There are secret chests and lure collectibles in this and other sections, but if it's your first time clearing this place out, don't worry about those for now. If you do want to get them anyway, go to later in the video for their locations. Sorry for having you ping pong back and forth. Up until you get into a section where you are slowed, there isn't really much to this platforming stuff. Platform your way up to what I'm calling an Orlando, then you'll traverse the high beams, watch out for ogres here who will absolutely try to boop you off, and eventually you'll reach a room that slows you down. You cannot use extra jumps or anything like that. This is the Thrall Gauntlet, or the Thrall Way, and you can't regenerate health in here. So, you may want to utilize things like Crimson, Wormhusk Crown, Karnsteam Armlets, One-Eyed Mask, anything that you can do to regenerate health is helpful, including a healing rift. Once you get through this gauntlet, it's time for the first boss, Vorgeth. I assume brother, sister of Morgeth from the raid. Vorgeth will be immune to start. There are four wells around the center of this arena. The goal is to extinguish these wells to remove the shield protecting Vorgeth. When you initiate the fight, you'll have adds spawn everywhere, including Keeper of Petitions, which are just super beefy wizards. When you kill a wizard, they'll drop a buff called the Petitioner's Mark. When you pick up this orb, you'll have a timer placed on yourself and the entirety of your team that lasts for 45 seconds. If this timer ever runs out, if it ever gets to zero, you die. If you ever die, you lose all of your stacks as well. You need to stack this up to four in order to gain the Petitioner's Burden buff, 
also lasting 45 seconds, which enables you to extinguish a well. Extinguishing a well removes the shield of the boss and you can shoot Vorgeth. Vorgeth will also summon four Axion darts every few seconds while in this DPS phase that you should shoot down if possible. If the shield comes back, this process repeats itself until Vorgeth dies or you wipe. Adds will despawn during the damage phase. As for team composition and loadouts, generally anything will do well here. Well of Radiance is good either as a tool to survive or a tool to deal more damage to the boss. Most supers from all classes work fine here, as well as most, if not all, weapons. Whisper and Sleeper will likely be your go-to boss damage weapons, similar to the raid and similar to literally everything else in the game. The strategy here is to simply go around the room killing wizards as a group. The Vandals that spawn will also give you some potential trouble, especially at lower power levels. Kill them quickly, then move on to the wizards, sticking together as much as possible. You can deal damage to the boss anywhere in the room, wherever you feel comfortable. There is also a triumph for killing Vorgeth in one damage cycle. Pretty easily done with Whisper Spam. When you kill Vorgeth, the door in front of you will open, and you'll start the next section, which is another platforming section. The statue you see next will ask for your Dreaming City Medallion. If you give your medallion to the statue, it will disappear from your inventory, but you will still be able to enter the Dreaming City. At the moment, I do not know of any other implications of handing in your Dreaming City Medallion, or Talisman, whatever it's called. Again, there's not much to these platforming sections. You'll just be killing ads before moving forward. You'll have another easier thrall way to get through and that's really about it. After more of those platforming sections, it is time for the final boss, Duel in Karu, the Eternal Return, a 590 power level boss. When you start the encounter, you'll have three gigantic knights slowly walking towards you along with many, many scions spawning in. The knights are basically a one-shot if you get hit directly and will disappear every so often. The goal here is to kill as many knights as you can before they go immune so you can damage the boss. When you kill a knight, you'll be given the finite thought buff which allows you to deal damage to the boss, but it will also give the other knights an immunity shield after a short time. Destroying the crystal that eventually spawns behind the boss will remove this immunity shield from said knights. Finite Thought can stack up to three times if you manage to kill all three knights. When Finite Thought starts to get low on its timer, you'll need to use the middle plate to cleanse yourself. This process repeats until the boss dies or you wipe. Team composition, again, does not matter too much here. Any combinations of supers is going to work just fine. Tethers are good to start. Melting point is good. You pretty much have free reign here again. The strategy here is to run a lot. Killing Scions should be a priority at the start as they will quickly duplicate and overwhelm. A tether is great here. Otherwise, leading off with a super is a very good idea. It is possible to burst down one of the knights right at the beginning of the fight as a team, and if your damage is good enough, all of them. In fact, this fight can last as little as a few seconds if you manage to stack Finite Thought three times and nuke the boss, as we do in this clip. Oh, I'm dead. Goodbye. Finite Thought is what allows you to damage the boss. Um, I don't know what having more than... What the hell? Oh, that's I, what that does. I do one million per shot. Which one, yeah, oh I my know. god. <laughs> what in the actual end? What the sh- This is not a very long encounter. The best thing you can do for yourself in this fight is to create space for you and your team. Cover is very limited, and the sooner you get rid of the Scions, the better. When you kill the boss, you are done with the dungeon. Congratulations. Those who are able to clear the raid already probably won't have too much trouble with this place on your first run. This activity feels like it was designed to be a three-man raid activity. It is actually what I've been hoping regular strikes would end up becoming for a while now, and I think this is a great, great in-between. For the enthusiast, there are triumphs to solo this dungeon, get no deaths, and solo and no deaths. So, you got your work cut out for yourself. 
Now let's do some chest and lore collectibles. You should come prepared with Tincture of Queen's Foil, or two, or three, as some of these collectibles require you to be Ascendant. I know the location of six chests, two of them being big chests, that'll make sense in a minute, and three lore collectibles as of the making of this video. Any updates to this will be in the description. The Taken Eggs will be in another video as they encompass the entire Dreaming City and require a specific exotic in order to kill them. In the first section, we have one chest and one collectible. The first chest is by the Dragon Breathing Fire Temple. Face the temple and turn left about 100, 110 degrees. You're gonna go down the cliff edge and on the right side in a cave will be a chest. The chests here are similar to the regular chests that you may find in the Dreaming City, giving soft cap level blue or purple items. The first lore collectible is in the Boring Bird Temple, Boring Bird being the bird that is looking left, doing nothing interesting, towards the front of the zone. You need to be Ascendant to collect this one. Enter the temple and jump out the right side window. Take the platforms up, enter the building again, going to the other side, and take the platforms up to the roof. Or you can just do the dumb thing that I did and go around the building to the other side of the building. The bones will be on top of the roof. Moving on past the first area, the area before what I'm calling An Orlando Castle, has a chest and a lore piece. When you get to the door to An Orlando, turn left and look at the cliff. There will be a set of platforms on the cliff's edge that you can jump on, so you should jump all the way up following the video. The chest is in the room sealed with a giant door. The lore is on the direct opposite side of the chasm, directly across from this chest. Ascendance required. Simply jump on the platforms going to the other side, and in the door will be the lore. Yes, it is possible to get to this platform by other means, but this is the simplest. Enter an Orlando castle and make your way up to the high beams. There's another chest and lore in here. You're gonna go all the way to the right side of the beams, jumping across beams as needed, heading towards the next part of the dungeon. Behind a Taken Blight thing that spawns on the right side are a set of ascendant platforms that will take you to another very long beam, which has lore at the end of it. When you get that one, Head to the entrance of the Thrall Way, the Thrall Gauntlet, and go off to the right side along the edge for the next chest. Enter the Thrallway for the first big chest. By big chest, I mean it'll have some reverie gear and dark fragments, like actual important stuff. All you're gonna do is jump over the railing directly in front of you when you would normally turn left to go down the path. When you're just about to hit the railing, the slowed debuff will go away so you can use your jump and land safely. Turn around for the chest and a portal to send you back to where you just were. The next chest after this is also a big chest after the Vorgeth fight. Before you take the elevator up, there's an Ascendance needed chest off to the right side where the wizards are. Look over towards the right, platforms will start to spawn, and take them there. Seek out your mates on foe, so long as you stand wide in foot. Finally, the last chest that I'm aware of is right before you take the two final elevators up after the next Thrall Gauntlet. Instead of taking the elevator up, go behind it, there should be a doorway, make a right, and you'll find that chest. That is my guide to the Shattered Throne Dungeon. Like I said, any updates to this place will be in the description. 
unless I need to make a completely new video for them, in which case I will do that. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.